All right. Will, thanks very much for coming back to, wow, this is not my studio anymore. So, uh, it, but you look like you're someplace really uh, awesome right now doing some handiwork. What's going yeah, on with you? Uh, this is this is my shelf of materials behind me. I'm in my lab. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Uh, you and I have had a chance to discuss the upcoming release of Baudelaire. Uh, I am super psyched for it. I know a lot of people have been looking forward to its return. What can you tell us about the, the scent? It's been uh, on and off uh, availability for a while. Yep. And now it's back on. Yep. So um, it was originally released as part of our Black Label line, which was intended to be only for our retailers. We eventually ended up discontinuing that line. Just the, the idea just didn't really work well. But um, Baudelaire had proven to be really popular. So we released it a couple of years later in the croissant base, mm -hmm. which uh, is sort of the spiritual successor to uh, both white label and black mm -hmm. label. It, it was one of those things where I had gotten reports that people were having difficulty lathering our soaps in hard water, and croissant was sort of the next iteration in mm -hmm. my attempts to combat hard water effects on shaving soap. And uh, Barrister's Reserve and the new Excelsior base sort of represent the penultimate uh, result of that of that yeah. attempt. So, uh, you know, it originally when the when the first base was designed, when White Label was designed, I was living in Boston, and Boston has very very soft water. It's very yeah. easy to work with. Um, when I moved when I moved back to upstate New York, the water here is incredibly hard and had a totally different effect on soap testing. And so I realized mm -hmm. that uh, you know hard water can have very significant effects on the performance of shaving soap. And um, so I have set out to attempt to correct that problem. But anyway, in the in the in terms of history of the fragrance itself, it's very much inspired by uh, by Brut, which is a classic fougere. I mean, you can still get the the kind of nouveau version of it in drugstores. It's not quite what it used to be, but mm -hmm. it's you know it's out there. Right. Um, but I always liked the idea of a, a creamy fougere, and the original Brut, which I've smelled, but which you can't get any longer, really hit that home. But I always felt that it was lacking in a little bit of uh, dirtiness. Mm -hmm. And so the idea was to build creamy fougere accord and then counterbalance it with the mousse de sac space that I had already created for La Vanille. Right. So, Blair was the second use of Mousse de Saxe. I've used it for a few things since, most recently Vespers, which was mm -hmm. released on holidays. And um, it, it's very much the idea that you can have bright creep fougere and dark leathery undertones married in the same concept. So uh, it contains considerably more Mousse de Saxe than pretty much any other fragrance that we make. Mm. And I think it's all the better for it, to be honest with you. I, I think it counterbalances the sweetness of a creamy fougere accord really, really well. I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I am relatively new to this scent. It wasn't always available when I was looking for it. And, uh, I really I had a chance to use it the other day. I'm super lucky. I really liked it. Uh, the, uh, the experience with it in terms of silage and uh, longevity of scent, what can you tell folks about what to expect? So much of its longevity, which is quite considerable, is due to the inclusion of Mousse de Saxe. My version of the base, there are like three or four of them floating around at the moment. Various people have attempted to recreate it. One person is actually in possession of its original formula and uh, is manufacturing it for a company called Perfumer Supply House. And so far as I know, this, the product that he's making for them adheres to the original design. But uh, my version is actually considerably darker, resulting from a mistranslation of the original mm -hmm. search transcripts, where it, we had thought that it said it needed iodine, okay. it actually called for ionone. But um, this was before any, any real research into reconstructing the base had been done. Mm -hmm. So I decided to replace iodine, which of course I would never want to put in a perfume or personal care product. Uh, I replaced it with seaweed absolute instead. Right tremendously powerful and has a very strong iodine, you know, leafy green, uh, kelpy sort of smell. Okay. So that's a pretty strong fixative on its own and is largely responsible for the character of Mousse de Saxe, but mm -hmm. various other materials in it, most notably, notably isolated quinoline, which is the core material in all versions of Mousse de Saxe. Yeah. Um, isobutyl quinoline is profoundly tenacious 
and uh, I've had it on. I've had been unable to wash it off my skin for several days. <laughs> no matter how much you wash your hands, it just right. doesn't come off. So um, much of the undertone of Mousse de Saxe is responsible for the long-lived nature of Baudelaire, and it sort of flattens out and fixes mm -hmm. the rest of the fragrance to cause it to adhere to your skin for a longer period of time. Wow. Awesome. Uh, for folks who have not had a chance to load the Excelsior formula, you've already talked about, uh, in a prior video, you talked about croissant, you talked about reserve. Any tips besides what we'll show and we're using it ourselves, demo, any tips that you have for folks who are getting acquainted with the face? Make sure that you give it enough water. Um, Excelsior can be a little deceptive in the respect that you build the lather at first and it looks fine and you add water and it looks fine, but it has a tendency because of some of the materials in it to clump together and get very buttery. And this can be, this can be corrected with additional water. You just have to make sure you give it enough. And honestly, I've pushed this soap to the point that, it, that the lather starts to break down. I would be very surprised if someone were to accidentally do that. It can take huge amounts of water. And so just keep pushing it until you're mm -hmm. happy with it and it should be fine. Great. Next things that are happening here. We've got the soap, we've talked about the base, we've talked about the scent, the splash. Mm -hmm. This is a new tonic iteration, correct? Yes. Well, I, I wouldn't call it a tonic inter iteration as opposed to, as much as I would call it a new, an entirely new form of aftershave. Okay. Um, it's, I basically stripped down the tonic formula to its bare components and just started building it again. So its relation with the original tonic formula is somewhat tenuous. Okay. And so I, I just really would call it a new aftershave formula, which we're saying we're we're calling Deltas, and which you can you can identify by the fact that it's got a little triangle symbol okay. somewhere on the label. Um, it will be very obvious what it is. It's not like I'm hiding it in the label. Uh -huh. Some this is not a scavenger hunt. You will <laughs> notice it immediately. It's on the very far corner of the Baudelaire aftershave label, and any aftershave that uh, is made using the Delta space will have that symbol on it in some recognizable fashion. Uh, basically, what I decided was that Tonique was getting a bit long in the tooth, especially after the research that I had done in order to develop the Barrister's Reserve formula. So what I did was I pulled it apart and used different materials than we used in Barrister's Reserve. I uh, upped its moisturization uh, capabilities considerably. I upped its soothing capabilities considerably. It now contains allantoline as well as a series of botanical e extracts that allow it to um, help soothe mechanical abrasions, such as mm -hmm. that by shaving. And um, it also contains a variety of moisturizers. As I said, it contains a material called saccharide isomerate, which is very, very powerful. It contains hydrolyzed oat protein, which is also a very powerful right. material, soothing, moisturizing. The overall effect is that you put this stuff on your skin and it feels very silky, very smooth. It's not tacky. I definitely wouldn't uh, categorize it as a tacky aftershave, which I dislike personally. Um, but it's very smooth and soft. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And from now on, as it sounds like, that'll be uh, the new standard offering for the, the base that's not the Splash Reserve. Correct. And, and so what we're going to be doing is we will start changing over the aftershaves um, as we go, primarily as we're able, and uh, we will begin selling our main line, our classic line, you know, La Vanille, Seville, et cetera, in uh, the Delta's base, but I don't have a timeline for when yeah. that will occur. No problem. Uh, I'm excited to try it. I haven't tried it. I'm, I don't know anyone has, right? It, it's really, you are the only one right now. Right? I am the only one. It was yeah. developed in, in I don't want to say it was developed in secret, but I did not send it to any testers because I knew very much what I was looking for, what mm -hmm. I wanted in it, and so um, I adhered primarily to yeah. those to those characteristics. Well, I'm excited. Uh, EDT newly available in yes. this scent, correct? Right, right. We have never offered an EDT for this before. This is exclusive for West Coast, and. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited. I, I get about eight to 10 hours out of it. Um, I, I find it quite easy to wear. It opens with a very kind of strong seaweed leather character, but this burns away in like 10 to 15 seconds. And so the, the creamy fougere cord starts to come out and the counterbalance from the Moose de Sacks will show up after that. So it's in no way a linear scent, um, but it can be a little peculiar to people who are not 
acquainted with it and just, you know, rest assured that it will mm -hmm. not have that strange leathery character right. for more than a few seconds. Right. Well, I, I really appreciate you walking us through the scent and, and the use and experience, face feel, all that good stuff. Uh, you know that uh, it is going to be available to as many people as who want it. It is now going to be offered continuously. That's right. That's right. So this will not be a limited edition thing. We will make this for you for as long as you want it. <laughs> we um, I've gotten a lot of I've gotten a lot of questions. Is this going to be a limited edition release? No, it will not. For as long as West Coast continues to order the product, we will continue to make it. We're very excited about that and really humbled by it. Uh, I know it's a, a scent and a product that's near and dear to you. It it's is. also become near and dear to us. One of the things that we're trying to do to make sure that folks have access to it more easily is uh, we've we've upgraded our international shipping without any, uh, you know, quietly without any extra charges or anything like that. We definitely want to make it as easy as possible for folks to uh, to be able to get their hands on it. We're very excited about it. There's going to be a lot of demos, I'm sure, a lot of uh, daily shaves featuring it, um, and I'm I'm really won over by this end. So uh, it's awesome. I can't wait to try the splash. I already love the base. And I'm going to start smelling better with EDT. Well, that's great to hear. I'm glad you're excited, <laughs> as excited as I am. Yeah. All right. Well, it's good speaking to you, as always. We'll do it again. All right. Good luck in that bunker down there. Build a good table or something, okay? Thank you. <laughs> I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.